Today we're making asymmetric envelopes. I've made up a whole bunch of them and they look like this. So each of these asymmetric envelopes has collage on the front. You can see I've made a whole range of different designs and I'll share these with you today. And on the back they have a wonky flap. So I've done collage using little bits of scraps, I've used butterflies, I've used waxy paper, collage paper. Just so many different ways in which you can go to town, play and decorate each of these. And although they look a little bit different, they actually work just the same as any envelope. You can put lots in them and you could add them to maybe the pocket of a junk journal. So here's the one that I'm filling for Junk Journal July. It's already looking nicely chubby. And I would just take maybe a large upturned pocket, pick one of these, and it would be great to just tuck inside. You can put lots in them so you can still open up the flap here and put lots of paper goodness inside. And what's great about them is they're made from my favourite supply, which is book pages. So I've made the ones you see here with a page from a Spanish dictionary. So this is quite light paper, but I'm also going to show you how to make them from very commonly available book pages like this gardening book here. I have process steps for you as usual to make life really easy. Take a screenshot, these are in Pinterest, let's play. The first thing we need to do to make these asymmetric, or as I like to call them, wonky envelopes, is a book page. So I will tell you in a second the dimensions of the Spanish dictionary that I'm going to make and collage one with, but I will also kick off in a second using really readily available book pages from this gardening book but I do suggest that for this project you get your supplies and sort them distribute them around your desk so as usual what I've done is create a little bit of a semicircle really with the various bits of supplies that I might want to draw on while we're doing this so I've got an ink pad in fact I've got a few I've got my inconic pens I might do faux stitching I've pulled out a few stamps I might want to play with I've got some of my paints, so my well-worn gold Curitaki paints for splattering and I've got my, I think I've got my Arteza and my Curitaki watercolours. I've got a collection of my washi tape just in there. I keep, I keep mixing them up a little bit but I am trying to get through them, I have rather too many. I have a basket of collage papers here to draw on and over to the left I've got I've got some bigger papers here, so just in this box here, this little basket here, um, I've got some labels just here for decoration and some larger pieces of ephemera to the left there. So spread out your supplies around you to encourage yourself to have a play. And let's start by pulling a couple of pages off these lovely, lovely books. So the very lightweight pages from a Spanish dictionary are great because then you don't get a really thick envelope but equally I really like to use these super thick pages from a gardening book and I think these are more readily available certainly I'm not using vintage book pages I'll show you the dimensions so to start with the dictionary page so this is very lightweight paper quite white so not vintage nothing particularly special they are with 18 and a half centimetres or so, so about nearly seven and a half inches, and that's about 25 and a half centimetres tall, and in inches that's about 10. Now these book pages don't have to be a precise size. You want something that is rectangular, and that's why the flower book, or the gardening book, works as well, which is just under here. Oh, they're so heavy, aren't they, these books? So this page I really like because the paper is thicker and I've been wanting to make something rather special 
with these as well. So again, to give you the dimensions, these are just over 21 centimetres wide, so nearly eight and a half inches and 27 centimetres in height, which in inches is about ten and a half. Now you don't need to be precise, as I say, just find a book page with a rectangular shape and I'll show you how you can make use of different book page types. That's what I really want to help you use your book pages and maybe plough through a pile of books, which I, I shared my pile of books on my organisation video a few weeks ago and I'm trying to get through them. So let's start with just the really simple design before I move on to giving you some examples of how to create these wonky envelopes with collage. I think these can work incredibly well from using these gardening books because you get these images just on the slant, on the angle. And I just think that's incredibly, incredibly pretty. And you can really make a feature of the flowers. Doesn't it work really well? So colourful. I mean, look at that one. That's gorgeous. So what we need to do is take our book page and to begin with, turn it on its side like that so that we have a landscape shape so it's more horizontal and we're going to find the center point down here now we don't need to measure we don't actually need to use a ruler and count anything the way that I like to do this is literally to fold it over and make a little indentation Press your finger down, just on either end. And I take a pencil, and where I can see that I've got that midpoint, again, don't count anything, just put a little pencil mark. And then if you want to, you can help yourself. This is just to help with a, a line of sight. Take your pencil and just make a little mark in the middle. And if we make the mark in the middle, I'll show you when we do the folding, this won't be visible. And we're now going to fold up some of these corners. So I'm going to take my bottom right corner and fold it up to that line that we've drawn. So basically to the midpoint. And I've drawn a line rather than folding in half because I don't want to crease in the middle of my envelope when I'm finished. Well, this helps us be quite precise, which does help. Now I've got a really thick piece of paper. I'm going to take my plastic bone folder and just crease that out. So I've got ideally quite a nice 90 degree corner here and down here. And now we want to just rotate this and do the same again pick up your bottom right hand corner and fold that up and you've got a little mark a little pencil mark on the edge there to help you we'll just fold that up and bring it to meet the edge of this first fold that we did crease that out it's not one of those projects where you need to be unbelievably precise or it just goes a bit wrong, so don't worry about that. Now you can see that because this book page is quite thick, when I crease, these folds stay down and that's going to help us when we want to fold the flap down. So now I'm going to look at the outside, the picture, and think, although it's going to be on the diagonal, this picture, which way up do I want this picture to be? And I think I'm going to have the flap of the envelope here and this being the bottom. So I'll just turn it back over and I'm going to fold this bottom point up and I'm going to do it so that the fold is just a little bit in here, maybe half a centimetre, taking off a little bit of that point. So basically fold up, don't fold up at point where this meets the back, fold a little bit beyond it and just try and get that as neat as possible too. 
I need my creaser maker. Let's get that down nice and flat. And we haven't done any cutting, have we? We've not really done any measuring. I'm now going to fold this flap down in exactly the same way. I like to do that, make life easy. Just open that up and I'm going to fold up again. Again, I'm going to fold just half a centimetre or so in and fold that up. And fortuitously on this particular book page, I've got a lot of these little box lines. So I use anything like that to make life easy to make my folding neat. So I'm just sort of using that as a bit of a line of sight. There we go. So again, I've not done I've not done any cutting, which I do in my traditional envelopes. So when I've been making them in a, another design, I've done a little bit of snipping, no cutting. And I've found that these are actually really, really quick. So that gives me an envelope with a beautiful design on the front. And all I need to do is a little bit of gluing. So let's just share where we're up to on the process steps. We're working through step two. And we've basically done all of these points here which are about folding. Now I did, when I started making these and having a play with some different designs, I did think I might want to put a little closure on here, like this one. So this was one of my early bird designs. That's waxy paper, a bit of gold foil, stamped and painted, just added some extra personal design items, just having fun. And I added a closure on the back thinking it might need it. So I just, at this point before we do any gluing, added a closure with a brad at a point so that when I rotate it, it catches this flap. But it felt quite fiddly as a task. And I'm not really sure it needs it. And I'll say why. If you are making these envelopes from thicker paper, then the flap stays creased and folded down enough. And what I've done with these other designs is put collage on the back flap and it just weights it down. So I'm actually thinking that for all of these, so for all of these, I don't think that any of them need a closure on the back. They're all weighty enough and it feels really nice the way that this folds over and just stays down. It's faster to make. But if you do want to, before we glue, that's the point at which you would add it. So gluing the envelope together just couldn't be easier. I'm going to use a glue stick because it's not as liquid, so it's less likely to make any paper warp. Check that you've got your envelope the way up that you want it. So I said I would have the design this way. In fact, with flowers, often you can hardly even tell which way the design is up. Pull up your flap, pull down the bottom, and we're going to add glue just on the edge here so that when this folds down it catches it and then we're going to go on this area here. The only thing you need to do, maybe lift it up and put it down again a couple of times, is just eyeball so you don't go outside of the area where you want glue. I've done it so many times. So on this one, I can just see I need to go about there. So basically colour in that space with your glue. So no cutting, very, very quick. Fold that up and stick it down. And I've got a really pretty envelope. And you can crack out a few of these very, very quickly. So this is perfect for mass making. However, when I'd made a few of these, I did think that I really liked the, the feel of creating nice collaged ones and I just enjoy the process so for me taking a bit more time to make these is, is really really the fun that I want to have at my desk so why don't we have a go at making one with that dictionary page I can make something like this and I'll show you in particular how I very neatly add the paper and the collage to the back flap just using that knife that I showed you let's do that so the same basic design I'll do with the dictionary paper, turn it on its side and I'm going to fold it over and just make a tiny, tiny mark with my finger by pressing down 
at the midpoints and actually with a dictionary. I think I'll have it that way. I use the, the rows of text to help me line up so I don't even make any marks with a pencil. Just one and two, very quick. Obviously very easy to fold light on the fingers if you're using a, a really light sheet of paper. So that's our two main folds done. So I'll just turn it on its side. It looks a bit like a napkin, doesn't it? Take one bottom point, fold that up. So I've just got a bit of extra at the bottom right, just to catch the page. Turn it round and fold again. Maybe just open that up while I do it. Just go up there, fold that down. And it is easier with this sheet of paper to get this crease super flat. So if you want something that's lighter in your junk journal and not quite so heavy and robust as these, I do recommend something like a dictionary page and why not have Spanish? Get interesting words. So now I can do my gluing. At this point, turn it over and just think which way up you want it to go. I'm going to have the text in this angle here, so I can still see it. It feels sort of the right way up. So I'll make this my bottom flap, take my glue, and I need to go down this side, so just underneath, just on the edge here, and then I need to fill in under here on the left hand side, so I'll just have a look where the text ends Agricultores para que no. I apologise for that pronunciation. And just stick that down. There we go. And now we've got a nice template, a blank canvas to do some really pretty collage. So I've got a few little supplies around me. And I thought I would do something a little bit like this one. So these are some gorgeous bluebirds, some papers I've used from Antonio Makes. I'll leave a link and I think I have a discount code for these papers. I'll leave that in the description box below. I like to work in thirds, so sort of a third here of something and maybe two thirds of these. It's just a design style that I enjoy. It means I can flex using different papers but still know that I'm going to have a a really great effect. So I've got a piece of paper here, something to play with. I'll just tear that down. And in a minute when I've made this, I'll just flick through those finished samples with you so you've maybe got a little bit more inspiration for using your own supplies. So why don't we get that on? And actually I'm thinking I might want a little bit of collage paper to the right tucked behind. So I'm not going to completely press this down. I've torn a piece off that's a bit smaller than my envelope dimensions. Isn't that pretty? I think this is Victoria Designs. Oh, I love it. So this is collage paper that I have been using to great effect in my Junk Journal July journal. I'll go for something that will do. Tear that down. It's really great as a mat for when you're just creating a journal page. It's cheap, it comes in many many of our parcels and I don't like throwing it away so I'm working my way through it at quite a rate of knots at the moment. Do you use this? I can go behind. I don't like my straight line at all so I'm going to take some washi tape and just cover that up go there and some of those supplies I had around me include a stamp and my lovely black ink. So I'll just have a go with that. Maybe I'll just get a quick label on, cute little label for a bit of detail. See how quick it can be? Ta-da! Maybe not colour cover up too much of that stalk. Yep, that's great. 
over all of it, add a bit more green. I do feel like I'm making my collage quite personal when I add a stamp over the top of a digital. Let's see how it's going. It's even painting quite well over that washi. Mix it up. Love painting. Not so great at the actual drawing bit, but this way if I use stamps and paint just looks, I think, really good. Right, I'm in the zone now, so I'm just going to add a little bit of the a little bit of something at the bottom. And all we need to do now is just add some extra collage and weight of paper on the back. And as I said, this is what I find gives it the extra weight and means we don't need to add that closure. I really don't think it's necessary, though you can if you want to. It's also great fun having this angular design. You can fill it with pieces of paper that are a bit smaller than the flap if you want to, which means you don't need to have great big pieces to use. So I've, on these, just added extra detail using other items. This one I had a piece that was big enough, and I'll show you how to glue it on and cut it with that knife in a second. I really like going to town with different little clusters of extra detail just in the flat corner down here. So why don't we have a go with this one? It's dried enough for me to turn it over. So I just need a little piece of paper, something that will go with this design. So reaching in, I could choose something that is fawn, so a natural beige or a blue. What do you think? Should we call out the blue? So. As I said, this isn't big enough to cover the whole flap, but that's absolutely fine. I'm going to take this piece and just glue it on and cover as much as I can. Now I could have it that way, or I could have it that way. I think I'm going to go for this space here. What you do want to do is make sure that this extra collage paper goes to the tip of your flap. And the reason for that is we're really trying to add a bit of extra weight to that tip so that the flap holds down. So I'll get some glue on here. And I know my piece of paper is going to extend over it, but I can use my knife if I need to, to just cut that off. So I'm going to the tip, putting it on, lining it up, and pressing it down. So here's my gap. Now I could either collage that in as well or I could leave it. Let's see what we do. And I'm going to just fold this back so that I can use my knife to cut it off. Just using the tip of my finger there. So any way you want to, just make a fold. You could fold it forwards like that. So I'll find my knife. Here we go. And I'm going to use this to just go flat on the table. It'll be easier this way. And just run along. So begin at the corner. Get your knife really flat on the table. And I've gone as far as the envelope. So I also want to take off this piece here. So just be really careful with a knife. It's quite sharp. Bring that off. And I'm left with a flap that's been covered with a bit spare. So I'm going to fold that over and actually glue that down as well rather than cutting that off. So I'm keeping a piece of the spare on the side so that I can glue it onto. It's magic, isn't it? And it just fits. How does that work? How does that happen? So that folds down neatly and nicely. I think what I could do is add just something to cover up that edge there. 
maybe a bit of washi with text on it. It's the saviour of so many things, washi, isn't it? It's just so useful. And the other thing that I've found is really helpful is to put a bit of washi tape on the edge of the flap like I have done here. And that just adds extra weight and robustness as well. So just to get a little bit more, I might put something down the side. Piece of gold washi. Let's give it a tatty edge. I'm going to add that just down this long side here for a bit of extra strength. Maybe I'll add just a little, little label down here. Asymmetric envelopes from Big Book Pages. Check out my recent video, Making Pockets with a Side Tie. I think you'd really enjoy that too. Give me a thumbs up if you've enjoyed this and I hope to see you soon.